Hi, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and today I'm going to review Sprayder's Export to PNG feature. The first thing to do is select the animation you would like to export, and for the first example, we're going to find the walk animation, which is here. So we want to export this animation as sequential PNG files. So once I've selected the animation, I choose File, Export to PNG, and then the, um, the file uh, folder dialog pops up, and now I can, I'll choose my desktop for this example, and I'll create a new folder called Walk. There we go, now we're in that Walk folder, and I'm going to name the animation Walk as well. Oops. Walk. Save. Now this dialog comes up and it gives us, as you can see, many options. And one of the options is keyframes only. And if you click on that, um, then these numbers here don't matter because every, uh, however many keyframes you have, that's exactly what it's going to export. Uh, but very often in the case of something like a walk animation, you don't necessarily want the specific keyframes to be exported. You want uh, frames to be exported just at even intervals, maybe twice as many uh, frames exported as there are actual, actual keyframes or something like that. So in the case of this animation, I'm going to uncheck that, and I can simply choose the number of frames I want for my walk cycle. So if I want something fairly smooth, I can go for something like uh, even 24 if I wanted to or, or higher. It's, it's really up to you. Um, the average classic game might have something more like 8 to 12 frames, so we're going to do 12. And um, just click OK. And it's exporting the frames. So I can go look in my desktop into my uh, walk folder that I've made. And you can see the frames as full sequential images, evenly spaced. Another method you could use is to simply tell Spryder what frames per second you want to export your animation as. Uh, for example, we can do 24 frames per second. And that will automatically calculate how many frames would be required for that animation. As you can see, it's now updated. And we've got a very smooth walk cycle at 24 frames per second. And finally, there are some cases when you want to export an animation, but you don't simply want Spriter to export evenly divided frames based on the timing of the animation. For example, if we look at this idle animation here, the frames are not evenly dispersed and most importantly, we have this very quick blink sequence, which might get completely skipped over depending on the FPS we choose. And it's, it's very likely uh, Spryder won't export if we choose a normal FPS type export or a number of frames. There's a very high likelihood that this blink won't uh, get exported in a nice manner. So in circumstances like this, that's when we want to choose this other export method. So I will uh, choose File, Export to PNG, and on my desktop I'm going to create another folder called Idle. Press Enter, and then I'll call this animation Idle. Choose Save, and the dialog will pop up in a second. Okay. So now, what we want to do is just choose keyframes only. And however many keyframes you have, that's how many will be exported. And of course, if you needed, um, for example, some more tweens or some smoother or a higher number of frames, you could always have uh, scrolled through the, the timeline and used key all to create another keyframe wherever you wanted another keyframe to be exported. Uh, so you make sure keyframes only is selected with the little X there, and you click OK. And now we're going to find the idle folder, and you'll see 
that we now have all the frames needed to animate the idle, including the blank, perfectly intact. So a couple of other things uh, that you should know. Uh, no matter what method you use to uh, choose how many frames to export your animation as sequential PNG images, uh, you can also export them and scale them at the same time. For instance, if you've created all of your game animations uh, with art twice as big as is needed for the final game, uh, which uh, actually lend, tends to lead to very nice uh, results, what you can do is output your PNG size make, make sure to choose under normal circumstances uh, constraint proportions and then we would change this to 50% and then obviously you want to make sure that we have uh, keyframes only selected otherwise you're going to get a lot of images and uh, we'll click OK and then we're going to take a peek in the idle folder and you'll see these images are half the size and there you go, the blank is still intact. And there are a few options here in the source rectangle dialog uh, to allow you to trim the rectangle, um, meaning how the, um, the image is exported, how it's cropped to the animation so that each frame rests in the same exact size image, uh, which is much easier to, um, to properly uh, sort of anchor point your uh, your animation uh, in your game, uh, but if you don't need that or you want it more optimized and each each image trimmed to its own unique size based on the size of that particular frame, then you can choose trim to each frame, or you can choose custom rectangle and you can enter numbers here to designate uh, the position of the top left uh, and uh, bottom right corners of the the trim. Obviously, you need to make uh, make sure uh, that this rectangle you create is big enough to uh, safely um, capture everything in all frames. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.